to another video from bananacomputers.com. Today we're going to have a look at this Dell PowerEdge R730 XD server. First we're just going to take a look at the server in general. As you can see it's a 2U rack server and in this case it's a 730XD which means that it gets extra drive capacity and as you can see I've got four sets of three 3.5 inch hard drives on this one. Internally it also has a cradle which contains four extra 3.5 inch hard drives. It also has the facility for two rear mount drives. In this case they're SSDs 2.5 inch but we'll get to those later. We start by having a look at the front of the R730 XD. On this far left side you can see the power button which of course has a light indicator behind it and right next to that we've got the system indicator. This flashes an LED on the rear of the system so for identification when you've got them mounted in a rack. Next to the power button is the NMI button used for troubleshooting with certain software. The system is already loaded with 12 3.5 inch hard drives. In this case they're SAS 6 terabyte 7.2K drives. As you can see four banks of three and each of these a hot plug they come out that easy and this can be done live while the system's on and of course the pop back in as easy as that on each of the drives you've got a little light that lights up here and one above it which gives you drive activity and system status which is basically the, a green light for good health that's what we're looking for on these we have a look now on the right hand side you've got a usb management and iDRAC direct port it's for usb devices and of course for access to iDRAC direct features and then just below that, you've got your VGA video connector. Just below that, we've got the optional quick sync feature, which requires the optional quick sync bezel, should you require it. Now, if we have a look on the rear of the system, we start from the left here, and you've got the system ID button, which flashes for ID recognition. It's for if it's in a rack, and of course, you press the button on the front so you can ID, which is the servers in the rack that you need to access and work on. Next to that, of course, is a system indicator for optional system indicator assemblies. Of course, the next port along is the IDRA Enterprise port, which is a dedicated management port for your server. Just above that, this is for those that have taken the optional half height expansion slot card, which is a riser card with up to three expansion slots at the half height size, low profile. In this case, it doesn't have that option fitted and we've just got the blanking plate filling the slot. Next to the iDRAC, we've got the serial device connector. For just a, a simple connector for attaching serial devices, of course. And next to that is another VGA output for attaching another VGA monitor. Next to the VGA monitor display, we've got two USB 3 ports. It can be used for charging and, of course, are USB 3 compatible. We have a look in the centre of the back of the machine. Here we've got a quad port NIC. In this case, it's a Broadcom 5720 and these are one gig. Just above that, we've got two full height PCI slots. Inside is a PC riser card, you've got up to two additional slots there. And if we look just to the right of that, we've got a third one in another riser card internally. Just below that, we've got two rear mount bays for 2.5 inch hard drives. In this case, we've got two 60 gig SSD SATAs, and in both cases, they're hot swap, and they come out as easily as that. And again, really simple to put back in. And just below that on the back here, we've got two 750 watt power supply units. It offers you redundancy, of course, and again, just like the hard drives, they're hot swap very easy to remove and very easy to refit. And then last but not least, the other feature on the very back is we've got an V-Flash media card slot. This is for SD cards with the V-Flash media on it. And of course, it, it, I think the capacity on this one is a 8 gig or 16 gigs. Now we can have a look at the rest of the machine. Here we go, we've got the top cover and of course they have a top cover lock and latch. In this case, as you can see, it's set to open, but you can use a coin or a screwdriver and quite simply. 
set it to lock so that the catch can't be used. The catch just lifts up, as you see, pulls the server top cover away a little, and then that can actually be removed as easily as that. Now that we've got the top cover off, we can have a look at a few of the components. This little board that you can see tucked away at the back here, with some connectors on it. That's the back plane. That of course attaches to the hard drives and is a direct connection to those. And these various cables run off to the RAID control card over here. Just next to the back plane, we've got the internal fans. These are hot swap again, so come out as easily as that and go back in just as easily. Of course, have a release catches to take out the entire assembly. Next to that, we've got one, a nice feature on these XDs. In this case, it's the cradle with the extra four hard drives in. As you can see, the cradle has a back plane also with two SAS connectors, a connector for the back plane of the hard drives on the front, and also a power connector. In order for us to get a look at the rest of the internal components, I'm going to remove the cradle with the four extra hard drives in. Anti-stack it static wristband, of course. So first off, disconnect the SAS connected for the back plane on the front and the power and it lifts out as easily as that. Now that we've removed the additional hard drives we can have a look inside at the rest of the components. As you can see what's revealed from the hard drive removal we've got the DIMMs and the two heat sinks on the processors. And as you can see, this server has the option for two processors and 12 DIMMs per processor with a total of 24 DIMMs. We have a little closer look. As you can see internally, we've got two additional SATA ports. We also have a couple of onboard SAS ports as well. Here in the center, as part of this whole housing. That's the RAID controller card. In this case, it's the PERC H730. We have the all important CR2032. This is the battery for your BIOS, of course. Very important. Just over here, this is the housing for the lock for the latch assembly on the top cover. Below that, this is the back plane for the two rear mount hard drives. As you can see, connected in, and there's the actual two hard drive bays themselves. Just above those, you can see we've got the V flash media slot. There's riser card number three, riser card number two, as you see, on number three, the mountings on this side. Leaves one slot, and in this case, it's, it's an X16 PCI slot for CPU 1. Here we in riser 2, we have two PCI slots one's an 8 times, one's a 16 times. Here is where we would have the additional PCI riser put in this option on this system that, that's not been taken, and so we have the filler. Just up back here we've got the network daughter card which of course is a quad port with one gig NICs on. And of course you can see various connectors on their internal connections to the motherboard. Just have a little look around for you so you can see the internals. Of course, on the top, we've got a rather com fantastic configuration and layout guide, so you know how to connect what. So 
refit the internal hard drives. Just going to put the cradle on. And the first thing we're going to do is just put the connectors back in. We've got SAS, got the back plane, got the second SAS, and the power. That deck makes it much easier to slot him back in, click him into place. For tidy's sakes, I like to put the wires down also. Now that we've done that, we can refit the back cover. Which is no more simple. And line it up. And use the latch to lock it off. Just to finish off, I think we'll have another look around the system. Just so you can get a look at all of the features and components. I think one of the things we didn't mention this little tab here, which has got the identification tag and service number for the server, should you ever need to phone on in regards to your warranty and get some support from Dell. As you can see, connectors on the side for the rails that you can use to fit. They both come in both static and sliding. They're used for attaching to your rack. One final thing we can look at with the server is the accessory tray that comes with it. Let's have a look inside. As you can see, in this configuration, we've got an inclusive mouse and keyboard. Got one, two power cords for both power supplies, and of course here, this rather lovely lockable bezel for on the front. Can see comes with the key inside. As you can see, we've got various books and bits of paperwork that come with it, including very importantly, getting started guide, and then the very important open manage system management tools and documentation DVD from Dell. And that is the accessory tray. As you can see with our Dell servers, they're packaged very well. They have custom cut foam inserts to keep them safe inside. Thanks for joining us on our little tour of the Dell PowerEdge R730XD server. Don't forget you can check out what's available and what deals we've got at the moment on www.bananacomputers.com or www.bananacomputers.co.uk. You can also check us on our eBay website again, Banana Computers. Hope to see you soon.